Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Recently, I had said at the end of a Quo episode that I may not return to Quo. The reason was I had sort of repeated a lot of the same topics and was concerned that I was going to reread some different channelings. But I did promise if I found something new that I would return. And I have found a wonderful new channeling delivered on January 14th, 2023 that addresses a variety of topics that are relevant to some of the stuff we've talked about in the past. DNA alteration in the pineal gland, Orion influences on Earth, seeking together as a group, the status of third density entities on Earth, forming social memory complexes, so many interesting topics from this channeling. For those that are not aware, Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled by LL Research that answers spiritual questions and they have addressed a variety of interesting topics about Earth's history and our current process of ascending into a fourth density or fifth dimensional new Earth. So it's nice to return to the beautiful teachings of Quo. I am Quo. And with this instrument at this time, we greet each of you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator who exists in all of what you call time, space, and the universe about you. We are honored to be called to your group today to speak to those concerns you have that are a part of your spiritual journey. This is what we feel most honored to do, as it is our own journey that is accelerated as we are a service to you. And in that hope of helping you to accelerate your journey, we join you this day. We would ask you to take in the words and the concepts that we share with you today and use your own discrimination as to whether or not they are a value to you. For we are not what you would call ultimate authorities. We have moved a bit further along the path that you travel. And we would suggest that if there is any word or concept that we share from our perspective that you do not feel resonance with, that you leave it behind. If you would grant us this favor, then we feel more free to speak our minds, our hearts, our spirits in the form of words in answer to your queries. At this time, we would ask if there is a query with which we may begin. Yes, thank you, quote. Was there a time or were there times in human history in which non-human intelligences altered human DNA associated with the function of the pineal gland? If so, when, by whom, and for what purposes? Will Quo please advise methods or practices to train the mind and improve the function of the pineal gland through the Ajna Chakra? I am Quo and aware of your query, my sister. This is a very interesting query for the Confederation of Planets in the service of the One Infinite Creator has been represented from time to time in this interaction with the entities of planet Earth in various ways, some of which are as you have described. There was at one time a population upon the planet which you call Mars, the Red Planet, which had what you would call the tendency towards bellicosity in the degree that this warlike behavior rendered the atmosphere of their planet unable to support third density life. Thus, at the beginning of this master cycle of third density 75,000 years ago, the confederation entity known at this time as Yahweh transferred the population of Mars to planet Earth to continue their third density experience in the learning of the ways of love. This transfer in the beginning was that which you would see as the cloning process, whereby the DNA of the entities from the Red Planet was adjusted in a way in which the Mars population would be more able to assimilate and express the ways of loving each other. That is the lesson of third density love, of third density experience, the opening of a heart in unconditional love. The majority of the time in one's incarnation, this process had the hoped-for result of causing these entities to be 
more able to perceive in a mental fashion the concepts of love and the ability to share it as more intelligent and vigorous physical vehicles were the type of body pattern used at the time. This type of genetic adjustment was then further promoted as the entities of the red planet incarnated on earth and were then adjusted yet again in the normal sexual reproduction way so that this type of ability to learn the ways of love was hopefully to be given a kind of boost and this would allow an easier process in each entity to be able to do this. However, there was at that time a shall we say difference of opinion that many other confederation entities or guardians as you would call them at that time felt appropriate to voice feeling that the free will of the entities from Mars had been abridged and that too much emphasis upon their superiority in ways compared to their previous experience on Mars were manifesting within their own being. This then necessitated what you would call a quarantine of the planet Earth so that further entities of social memory complexes that would wish to become able to move into the Earth sphere or Earth plane of third density would need to have this plan approved by what has been called the Council of Saturn. This was done with the hope that future interactions between the Confederation and the third density of Earth would be more equitable, shall we say, and that there would not be the feeling of superiority upon the part of the entities that had interaction with those of Earth. This is a process which has been ongoing for some time upon your planet, so that those entities from Mars are now working their way through their own type of feelings of having caused difficulty to their home planet and now they feel more desirous of aiding planet Earth in their own evolutionary process of seeking to balance the difficulties they caused on Mars. As far as the second portion of your query, my sister, as to the activation and utilization of the pineal gland, the indigo ray chakra, this is a process which each of you on this planet is attempting to be able to do, for it is that indigo ray, or pineal chakra, that has the ability to do work in consciousness that is of a very helpful nature, not only to the entity activating that chakra, but to those about it that are able to feel the less distorted cosmic inflow of energies that may be expressed through the indigo ray chakra. The process by which this is accomplished is one which is that of the progression through the third density experience that may take many lifetimes for each energy center beginning with the red and going forward through the orange, the yellow, and so forth, and arriving at the indigo. These centers must be fully activated in as fully a manner as possible so that the love light or prana of the one infinite creator may move without significant blockage or obstruction through each energy center, the red ray of reproduction, sexual reproduction, and survival, the orange ray of acceptance of self, and the personal eccentricities, the yellow ray of group energies, the green ray of the unconditional love of the open heart, the blue ray of the freely given and accepted communication and inspiration with others, thereby leading to the indigo ray. The ability to do work in consciousness as the activation of intelligent energy may at some point allow the entity to contact intelligent infinity and know in full the one infinite creator that exists within all beings. Thus, this is a program of personal evolution for each entity that will be unique for each entity. For each is a unique portion of the one infinite creator that exists within all things and all entities. This is the journey of perhaps numerous lifetimes. However, each entity on earth at this time has been incarnated through the seniority by vibration which suggests that there are very likely many who have made progress up through the lower three chakras, have opened the heart chakra, which is the way that graduation into the fourth density of love and understanding is accomplished, and some few who have become adults who have gone forward into the blue energy center or chakra so that they may become the creator that has the outflow of energies that surrounds them. And all around them, and may inspire them to further work on their own journeys. Then, there is the possibility of the act moving into the indigo ray energy center, 
This is all a product of how catalyst is processed by each entity. In your daily round of activities, you experience the opportunity to utilize catalyst in one way or another so that the emotions that are triggered by interactions with your fellow seekers are the way in which one kind of catalyst or another may be utilized in this process of moving the energies higher and higher in the system of chakras. As you are able to utilize successfully this grist for the mill, this food for growth in catalyst, you move higher and higher in your chakras. You become more and more of the 360 degree being that is the one infinite creator. This is the manner of the activation of the indigo ray chakra and it is one which each in this circle and each on the planet earth at this time is attempting to do with more or less success depending upon the ability to successfully utilize catalyst and move through the energy centers. Question? Yes, quote, I first want to thank you for all the wisdom you've given to me and my friends through your communications. My question I think fits in well with the previous question. It has to do with the influence of the Orion group in the raw contact as an example was given of the Orion group's influence on Adolf Hitler. Ross said the intention was to unify by choosing an elite from the social memory complex known as the German people and then enslaving those who are not in the elite. Many people, including myself, see a similar process taking place at the present time. Those who would be in the elite and others tell those who are not in the elite to own nothing and be happy. They want to have us eat bugs and track our movement with digital IDs. To what extent is this work of the Orion Group? And I might add, to what extent is this work of the Orion Group, or does this have to do with what you discussed earlier about the transition from Mars to Earth and the bellicosity that had to be worked on at that time? Is it of that also? Whatever the cause is, what can we, the students of love and light and service to others, do to stop it or reduce it? Thank you. We are quo and aware of your query, my brother. We find that in responding to this query, there is some untangling and detachment that we must do before we may speak to the essence of the query. We, the Confederation of Planets, in the service of the One Infinite Creator, in our interactions with your planet, and through groups such as this, who receive our thoughts and transmit them vocally, cannot speak with confidence, and in honor of free will to specifics about living individuals and their actions upon your planet. This would allow our words to influence groups such as this and those who read our words to form opinions that we find would be inappropriate for our guidance of groups such as this. However, we may speak more generally to the essence of your query having to do with what you have described as a perception of an increase of these energies that you have identified as being similar to those influences of the Orion group upon the individual known as Adolf and the rise of a particular form of authoritarianism that came through this individual and his leadership. Indeed, the Orion group, just as of the Confederation, have a desire to exert influence over your planet, and this desire continues to the present day. And the unique energies present upon your planet during this time of transition from third density to fourth density allow for quite a potent and unique opportunity for both of these groups to interact with your planet. The advent of fourth density energies creates a certain transparency within the self that we find has become difficult for your populations to grapple with, shall we say in a direct sense. And thus this has generated much catalyst, both in personal ways and in interpersonal ways, and particularly upon a global political social scale. We find that touching upon the specific dynamics present within this would be impossible for us, for we cannot describe or even perceive the very specifics of these distortions as they play out. However, we can perceive that these energies offer an opportunity and a potential for greater polarization, and this opportunity becomes a sort of invitation for influence from outer sources such as the Orion Group and us of the Confederation. We encourage you as you examine these energies that you perceive playing out on a cultural and social political scale to reflect first internally upon what is being perceived. Our ever-present message that we wish to base our entire sharing with you upon is that all is one, that there is nothing that happens that is not of the Creator upon your planet, upon any planet, 
or within any iota of the creation. The implication of this statement is that what happens in what you perceive as the external world of your perception lives present within you, and the energies that you perceive as being of negative nature are of the Creator as well. The potential for the energies exists within each individual, whether they have chosen the positive path, the negative path, or are attempting to choose one or the other as they shift within the sinkhole of indifference. It is essential that this internalization take place for each positive seeker for the best attempt one can make to address such dynamics as they play out upon your planet must be based within love and acceptance, and this love and acceptance can only be found if one recognizes the unity between the self and the other self that one perceives as operating in these nefarious ways. We suggest that this is a preliminary or prerequisite practice to attempting to address such dynamics on an external level, for to look first outside without working on the self will encourage distortion within the self and risks the separation of the self with other self instead of the unification of self with other self. This would exacerbate the energies as you perceive them and create less opportunity for an external harmonious resolution to what we understand seem to be troubling developments within your society. Further, we encourage that as one views particular individuals, or shall we say targets, as being responsible for and encouraging these more authoritarian elitist energies that are growing upon your planet, to consider that their unique distortions may or may not allow for the Orion group to have direct influence over them. There are energies present within your culture that may explain the behavior, the desire to mold society in a certain way that may not be, as you were described, negative, but perhaps can be perceived that way. This is an important distinction, as it is true that the Orion group exerts influence over individuals, particularly those who wield power within your society and who have desires for a more service-to-self-oriented philosophy to prevail on your planet. However, these individuals typically in our perception operate in many ways that are not easily perceived and would not allow themselves to become targets of such perceptions, for it is a much more wise move for a legitimately and powerful service to self entity to shield themselves from such criticism and such perception. This brings us to a final point we may make in our suggestions on how to relate to such energies that you have described, and that is to release an attachment to any, shall we say, sure knowledge or confidence in exactly what is happening upon your planet, and instead surrender to the light and love of the one infinite creator. If you allow this light and love to move through you and dedicate yourself to sharing it with your world, you will be moved in such a way as to influence and to exist within your culture in a way that will indeed reverberate from the lowest levels to the highest levels of your social and political hierarchies so that the advancement of such elitist and authoritarian energies may be quelled or shall we say lose its energy and momentum upon meeting the energy that you are offering to your society. This may indeed move you at certain points to act in ways to seemingly combat such advancement, but we encourage you to always question your perceptions and question whether or not you are truly perceiving other selves with clear eyes offered by the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Or if within any other self you are perceiving there is a reflection that is being asked to be addressed within yourself and continually, day by day, moment by moment, attempt to address these reflections and utilize them for opportunities that they represent as catalyst that may bring you closer and closer to the one infinite creator through an open heart and an open mind. Is there a follow-up to this particular query, my brother? Thank you for that amazing answer quote. I do have a follow-up. There often seems that the love and the light that I attempt to generate for myself and those around me seems inadequate to the task, to what seems to be strife, what seems to be suffering. But when I get together in a group of people such as this, or in our study group, or where we live, that seems much stronger, that energy seems much stronger. Would a group such as ours working in the manner of a social memory complex provide more powerful generation of love and light that would help to clear perceptions and reduce the suffering 
that we see around us and lift us into fourth density. We are, quote, and we are aware of your query, my brother, and we thank you for the conscientiousness and the love contained within such a question. We may answer simply in the affirmative that yes, to operate in such a group coming together with the pure intention of seeking the love of the Creator and attempting to share that love with the rest of the world together as a group creates a certain charge that is exponentially greater than what we may say is the sum of the individuals. For as those of Ra have said, that those who seek together may far more surely find. This is indeed an essential aspect of spiritual seeking within your density and upon your planet, for there is an intentionality behind the, shall we say, metaphysics and the mathematics behind this. As the charge generated and the potential generated by groups, such as you describe, is greater than the individual's, this encourages individuals such as you and your other selves to work together in their attempt to seek and indeed attempt to serve your planet. And this dynamic contains a secondary benefit that may not on the surface seem like a benefit, but it is indeed an opportunity that presents itself in what can be described as interpersonal disharmony. We find that in seeking together as a group, the light generated may become difficult for the individuals within the group to deal with and create opportunities for the group to exercise love in a setting of safety and of intention that is not typically present within your society. And so we encourage anyone who meets in a group that when such disharmony arises, that it be seen as an opportunity for the group to exercise the principles and the practice that the group has gathered to share. We thank you again for these conscientious questions. At this time, we Take leave of this instrument and transfer the contact to the one known as Kathy. We are Quo. Kathy channeling. I am Quo and I am now with this instrument. And we repeat once more our gratitude at being with your circle today. A circle of seekers in which we see such beauty and sacredness of seeking. We appreciate these qualities which you bring to this circle. We may now ask, is there another query from this circle of seekers to which we may respond? Hi Quo, my question assumes that the earth itself has completed its transition to fourth density and understands that humanity's transition to fourth density is still underway. I also understand that the vibrational seniority is at play, which may be the answer to this question, but I'll continue with the rest of the question. Are all humans who are currently entering incarnations on earth, are they hybrids or at least capable of achieving fourth density within this lifetime? Or are third density beings who may not yet be ready for the fourth density still incarnating on the earth at this time? And if that is the case, being that the planet has completed its fourth density transition, how can there still be third density beings incarnated which are not capable of fourth density incarnating on this planet? We are aware of your query, my brother. We understand what may seem to be a transition period in which there may be inconsistencies or confusion as to the advancement and achievement of spiritual growth in that upward spiral, especially in this timing of which you speak. We may call your attention to the idea that while the earth itself, some call Gaia, has its ascending pattern, which is completing, as you said, the entities who choose to incarnate upon this planet over these past periods of years and continuing in this space-time are more of a mixture, an arrangement of growth in ascension, as you might term it. We may say that in one manner of speaking, Earth is an open door that has hospitality for all who are seeking to grow closer to achieving fourth density. The infinite creator and Earth as well has an open heart toward wherever an entity may be in their seeking and advancement. Some may come here with third density aiming to complete somewhat more of their journey while here, even if they do not achieve full fourth density capabilities. Many, many more come and are incarnated with dual activated third and fourth density bodies. Many more, you see them around you, have that capacity. You may feel it in their light, in their love that they express. You may observe others of such quality of advancement as you read about their deeds of great love that affect a greater portion of society. It is apparent to those, such as yourself, who are observant of this area of earth history, that more and more entities are capable of expressing more and more love, 
on whatever scale they are given in which to express it. This is a greater contrast to those entities who are perhaps not able to express love and light in their surroundings, in their deeds, in their activities, in whatever that way they may reach. But the earth, you may say, has a welcome mat that welcomes all the ones, as we said, who are most elevated in their approach to life, most open to living in light and love, make the progress alongside Mother Earth. These, while they make their progress toward and into fourth density, serve as examples for those who are less far along in their journey, expressing so much light and sharing so much love that it cannot help but touch the hearts of all. Even those who are still making their way through advancement in third density, helping them along their journey, whether that is to help them to achieve fourth density or it may help them as they prepare to continue third density on another planet. For we may say that no moment is ever wasted, no moment is ever lost in which love and light is shared for the benefit of all who may experience it firsthand or from a distance. The power of love and light exemplify touching the consciousness of all is valuable in every moment, helping the whole consciousness in which all entities exist to benefit, to grow even a little bit more in their spiritual journey. We hope that this addresses your query, my brother. Do you have a follow-up to that question? I do. When thinking about the types of humans incarnated on Earth at this time, especially those of what we might call the uncontacted tribes, are they the people in those uncontacted tribes? Are they able to reach the same level of ascension that people in this circle or with access to the rest of the world may be? We understand your query, my brother. It is always possible for a great leap of growth to happen in any seeker's journey. We may point out that catalyst may be of a challenging nature, causing a seeker to look within to grapple with the details of the catalyst, but another look upon that concept also allows for catalyst of a certain kind to open the awareness. The higher consciousness of those who may seem to not have experienced a direct connection with love and light. There being one field of consciousness, it is always possible for any one entity, any one aspect of that consciousness to be touched by love and light through dreams, through the soft awareness of something higher, through a gaze at the faraway stars in a night sky that may awaken. In any entity of any level of advancement and awareness, an understanding of something greater, something higher to grow towards, to reach for, Growth is something that is not measurable in finite measurements, as you would call them, but may occur in individual fashion through steady progress directly by those who have higher knowledge. But it also may occur, this spiritual growth, in sudden large leaps with which an entity or entities may work to process. Society upon earth has had times in its past history of great leaps of enlightenment that have occurred rapidly to bring whole cultures and civilization out of what you would call darkness or darker eras, ushering in times of greater awareness of light and the possibilities contained within that light for growth and greater understanding. We may suggest that this space-time in which you live may be one of those times of possibility of great leaps of progress towards great enlightenment of this spiritual kind available to all upon the planet available to those who, through their inward seeking, turn their minds and hearts outward to sense such great possibility, and to thus take it in themselves to grow in their own hearts and minds. We hope this response to your second query may be satisfactory at this time. This instrument thanks you also for your query, but at this time grows weary and asks for the contact to be transferred to the one known as Trish. We thank you once more. We are those of quote. Trish Channeling, we are those of Quo and we are now with this instrument. We would like to issue our gratitude for the love and light that this circle has generated, which acts as a force field, for lack of a better phrasing, that is supportive and safe, if you will, a secure place for this practice of channeling, which can sometimes feel or generate some anxiety or insecurity for the instruments. Accordingly, through this instrument, we would like to state how thankful we are, and this instrument is for that safety, for that love, for that light, 
and for the combined energy which, much like the twine of a thread, weaves itself into a stronger, more vibrant rope or connection to the unity of all and to the Creator. At this time, we would like to ask if there is a query to which we may speak. I just have one more on the theme of social memory complexes. First, I want to thank you again, Quo, and these instruments for all your work. Our interactions with the study groups associated with LL Research have been moving and profound. There is a sense of instant camaraderie in which we meet people and feel, after only a short time, we have known them for years. Sometimes we feel like we can read each other's minds. This leads me to ask if it is possible, if it is even our purpose for forming such groups to create a social memory complex here on the earth while we are in these body-mind-spirit complexes. Is that possible? We are those of Quo, and we are aware of your query, my brother, and we thank you for this query as well. We would like to start by stating that such groups as the one you have facilitated in your geographic space are most potent and pregnant with opportunity, situations, or dynamics which are those stepping stones to spiritual evolution. This is not to say that the wanderer on their own is less capable of that journey, simply that, as you may know, the seeking with others is a magnifying force, a generator of motivation or energy in the direction of which you seek. It is that combined energy, that increased intention, and that alignment that creates a less easily distracted or misdirected movement, exploration, journey of discovery. For that combination, that camaraderie is helpful and creates what you may call a solid framework of support to one another. For as one walks alone in their journey, one may become downtrodden or confused, but in the group movement forward, hand in hand, with like-minded other selves, there is the space to be of service to one another, to be tended to, and to attend to one another. We say all of this to highlight our excitement and comfort. That is the comfort we experience in knowing that such groups are finding root across your planet in increasing numbers. It is a balm, so to speak, to spirit, to know that other wanderers are discovering each other, are experiencing this incarnation with a little less isolation and a little more of that support they may feel with companionship. Indeed, it is through such groups that the generation of social memory complexes can take root and can begin to form. It is ever possible for all things are possible. And when we say all things are possible, we do not intend to diminish the probability of such an occurrence or diminish the intention behind the form of seeking. We merely mean to express support and affirmation as I'm sure some have experienced in the circle, those tendrils sprouting from that seed are already beginning to manifest in your interconnectedness with other selves. As you mentioned, the feeling as though you can hear or understand or know another's thoughts or perhaps what they're about to say. Feeling as though one can forecast or dial into another self with seeming ease. This can be manifested in other ways as well. The sensations of instant familiarity, the ability to openly and easily accept another self without the introductory, as you may call it, phase of relating, the what you might call getting to know each other period. So yes, this particular dynamic, this particular grouping of individuals whose intention is to seek and discover and understand this illusion, taking step forward in hopes of being service to self by being service to other selves first. For as you know, they are ultimately one in the same and in service to Gaia. It is through these groupings that the social memory complex is created. We encourage you to continue, if this is your mission, if this is what you truly seek from this experience, and to do so with an open heart, to do so with a gentle touch both for self and other self, and to do so with a loving tenacity, we might say, a motivation that is true to your heart and your spirit, but not one that is judgmental one that is accepting of finding how, if the root is lost, or if there is a perceived misstep, it is ultimately a gift. It is ultimately an opportunity to discover more about the self and the other selves in this group. And knowing that every expression, every instance that this group encounters ultimately is sourced by one united energetic thing, and that is love. Remember that anything outside of that love is but a distortion of that love. My dear fellow self, we commend you. We wish you a blessed journey, for we know that we can sense that in 
that dynamic there is much support and much love and by love and support we mean of the familial source the feeling of something deeper stronger than what you might call blood this instrument being unsure in this moment if she has allowed this contact to fully express itself is asking to see if there is a follow-up to this particular query question in the sharing period before our channeling many members have expressed a certain what i might call fragility they are in the midst of transitions in their lives losses the light that we seek to develop is dimmed because of this the love is constricted in some sense and yet we want to move forward positively even with these fears, these worries, these griefs, these uncertainties about what is to come, what can we do to heal that part of us that needs to be healed in order to continue to shine our light upon the world as brightly as possible? We are those of Quo, and we are aware and thankful for the query, my brother. We feel great compassion and empathy for the seekers in this circle and their ability to share so vulnerably the fragility of which you speak. For we know that this illusion is a heavily veiled one, availing so deep at times that, as you said, the light is dimmed. The ability to fully let that light shine through and within feels much more difficult, if not impossible. And so again, we are so thankful that those in the circle feel safe and called to share in their vulnerability. We would say that an important aspect to this is the trust that one may practice and hone in this incarnation, in this illusion. That fragility, as you term it, is at once a construct and fleeting. No entity is defined by moments of fragility. In fact, seekers, all entities, are defined by their moments of strength, of faith, of acceptance, and of love. So having the strength to speak to seem fragile is a most pure, vibrant, bright expression of light. And though it may feel uncomfortable and foreign to do so in this illusion, we affirm that it is a healing modality to witness it, to see it, it for what it is to face it head on and to love it for what it gives you what lessons are entailed and entangled may it be seen that this fragility these experiences of difficulty of feeling weak are ultimately immense gifts they are incredible classrooms for learning your own strength for learning your own purity how right truly everything is for all as well and it is and the remembering of that, the ability to see on the macro scale, the global view, the universal view, that this is all the part of our dance to further understand ourselves as extensions of the Creator, that we begin to let that light shine, that the veil begins to fall away, that the windows open, that our eyes open, heart and spirit open, and the energy of love is more easily channeled through self towards other self and back to self. At the crux, of what we are meaning to speak is that fragility as it's seen in this illusion is not seen as a blockage or negative thing on the universal scale it is seen as a most perfect most divine instance expression extension and manifestation of this experience that you've chosen to take on but it is just as perfect as your moments of strength just as perfect as your moments of bliss and never forget the richness of the sensation of fragility and knowing the opportunities that exist within it for self to be tended to by the other self that beautiful dynamic of learning about one another attending to one another we hope through this instrument we have been able to relay to the circle of seekers that fragility is a beautiful thing and that light is absolutely present and shining through fragility through moments of insecurity through moments of doubt even for it is all so perfect it is all so pure for that is all that there is that love that divinity at this time, we will take our leave of this instrument and transfer our contact to the one known as Gary. We are those of Quo. We are those known to you as the principle of Quo. And in almost completing our circuit around this circle of instruments, we greet this group once again in the love and in the light of the one creator. We thank each instrument for their fidelity in issuing the challenge and for the intention and patience of this circle measured as a function of some fatigue and the signal of this instrument's bladder that the time is approaching. At this time, we would ask if there is a query to which we may respond. We are those of Quo. Question. In previous channelings, specifically those of Ra, it was conveyed that the cause of what we call cancer is the emotion of anger without balance. My question is in the case of the body-mind complex that we call children with cancer. Is this manifesting as past life karma 
or part of their soul contract to be a catalyst for those around them? Or is it actually anger for those young children as well? We are those known to you as Quo, and we thank you for this question, my brother, and we sense the compassion out of which such a question arises. It is indeed one of the more troubling aspects of your illusion and the incarnational experience, be it for those who do not consciously reflect on life, or for those who are philosophers among you seeking to understand the deeper nature of reality, that those who would seem so innocent, so at or near the beginning of their incarnational journey, with so much road yet ahead, become afflicted with that which is generally or often terminal in your experience. By what mechanism is such cruelty, as you may perceive it, visited upon such innocence and the immense repercussive suffering that may be experienced by those close to such entities? We cannot say that there is any one cause to this situation outside of that one cause that is behind all situations, which is that infinity decided to know itself and embarked upon a journey of manyness upon that class which each of us carries out today. The cancer, as it is known to you, arising within the young entity is not an accident nor a form of randomness or punishment upon the young entity. It is a function of their incarnational journey and what they as a sovereign soul on the level of the soul wish to learn and the service to which they wish to offer. It may indeed be a form of soul contract whereby the young entity in agreement with those known as the parents or the guardians and the family about such a one make an agreement whereby such a situation will manifest for the learning and the balancing of all involved, perhaps as a karmic rectification or alleviation or the opening of the heart circuitry of those witnessing such, as what is known or often perceived to your peoples as a tragedy. The experience of the parent to the child is one of the most available and powerful portals upon your planet into the beginning experience of the unconditional love that created and sustained and embraces all things. Few opportunities involve such a testing and a development and an invitation and initiation into this love as the scenario of losing, as your peoples perceive it, the loved one. As such, from your perspective, it may be something of a noble sacrifice that such things are manifested, which is difficult to know from your perspective what is cause in any specific instance. We counsel that if such a prism is used to understand an event of this nature, that it not lead one's heart to indifference or a sense of deservedness, but rather that it invites the self into that which was intended by the catalyst in the first place, that being the enlargement of compassion within the being such catalyst tests and tries the souls of all involved. And indeed, to speak to another portion of your query, it is quite true that the entity new or young in your years in the illusion is unlikely upon their first incarnational journey in the third density experience, particularly at this time of the third density master cycle upon your planet. They arrive with fresh eyes in the incarnational sense, but in the deeper sense come preloaded, you may say, with a wealth of past history of learnings and misapprehensions and ways in which they have distorted and blocked and separated themselves or others conceptually in an illusory sense from the unity of all things. Thus, they have their own patterns of learning which may, for reasons unique to that entity, manifest at various stages of their life, be it the stage of infancy or the stage of the twilight years, and one such underlying current that may need balanced within the entity by their own discernment is that of anger. There is no rule which says deeper, unhealed, imbalanced threads within the self may only manifest within a certain time span in the incarnation. However, we would reiterate that which we spoke through the previous instrument about the underlying perfection in which all of your life experience unfolds. This is not to erase the sorrow with a trick of philosophical insight, but it is rather to contextualize the sorrow and the heartbreak, that it may be loved, that the self may broaden the point of view to understand that this moment is but one pearl upon an infinite necklace, shall we say, of moments. That all, even in the unwellness of the seeming moment, is well, and that the light is present even when the self sees only darkness. Is there a follow-up to this particular query in which we may speak before transferring this contact? 
No, thank you, sir. Thank you, my brother. At this time, we transfer this contact to the one known as Jim. We are the principal known to you as Quo. Jim Channeling. I am Quo, and I am once again with this instrument. We would like to thank each entity present here today for sharing that which is the heart of self. The concerns for how to travel the spiritual journey back into unity with the one infinite creator. That is a journey which we share with you. And we very much appreciate how you inspire us by how you work so hard in this density of forgetting. You've forgotten so much, and yet through your efforts at seeking, you have remembered so much. This is the way the journey of seeking the one continues in your third density and the higher densities as well. We would also like to thank the instruments today who have opened themselves to speaking our words in response to the queries that have been put before us. The art of channeling is one which has had a great deal of practice and experience in these entities and we are pleased to be able to utilize their abilities to open themselves completely to our words and thoughts. This again is a practice which continues throughout succeeding densities as each entity continues to channel more and more of the one infinite creator. In the life pattern, there is nothing but the one creator existing at all times, in all places, in all people. That is the great path. That is the great work. That is where each of us moves in harmony with you. We all move together, again, to find that one creator within the self, outside the self, within each portion of each person at all times. At this time, we shall take our leave of this group and this instrument. We leave you in the love and light and unity of the one infinite creator. We are known to you as those of Quo, Adonai, Vasu, Boragas. It was a genuine pleasure to return to the words of Quo, and I can't explain how powerful it is just to read the words out loud. If you ever get a chance, go and read some of these words out loud. Just go to llresearch.org. They carry a vibrational resonance deep within me. When I read it, it awakens something within me. I get a great pleasure and joy in reading it, and it's an honor to share it with you. As I said, I've covered a lot of these channelings, and this one covered so much new territory, I had to read it to you. We get a little bit more information about what happened when the entities were transferred from Mars to the Earth in the way they explain the history. There were clones made. So when they transferred the souls from Mars to Earth, those cloned bodies had genetic imprints created to allow for a greater amount of love and light. And this created a distortion or imbalance in that some people from that group considered themselves to be superior. Oddly, they mentioned this as a reason for the quarantine. Not entirely understanding why that would be the reason for the quarantine, but we get a little bit more clear information. This affirms a comment that I had on the last Quo video where somebody basically said the same thing about Mars and our movement here and it also gives us a better understanding of Yahweh and Yahweh's role in the, the whole process. Another great question I've wanted to get an answer to. People are being born all the time here and we've had implications from other channelings that we are in fourth density. So the beings that are coming here are of fourth density. But it would appear that things are just continuing on and based on this Earth is still welcoming third density individuals that will never have a potential of moving into fourth density to come into the earth experience, mostly because there's so many higher density beings being incarnated here at the same time that they will be touched by their light and love and lessons to allow them to be ascended or transferred into fourth density consciousness. When I meditate on this with my higher self, I'm told that the majority of the people coming to this planet now are fourth density and there is a third, fourth density variation that is given for most people coming to this planet. Most of the people coming to this planet are star seeds and indigo children. There's a greater 
definite potential for people to elevate and ascend. In a recent episode where I talk a little bit more about what I had experienced in my discussions with my own higher self, the idea is that we can ascend beyond just death, that we can ascend while we're alive in our bodies, that we can be taken up into light ships, into higher realms while we're in third density now and then come back as ascended masters, spreading our lessons of love and light much easier than sitting in a cave for 30 years meditating to become a master, that we are all masters. Many of us are already masters and we are simply awakening this potential that is within us. So I find it interesting that there are third density beings still being born and they play their role. And I find that somewhat interesting. There's also a very cogent question about the dynamic of negative entities and their polarity and its effect on the earth. The way that they manipulate and try to take advantage of those that are poor, that do not have the resources. And I found their answers to be interesting. Don't look out on the world and assume that that person over there is negative polarity. The ones that are service to self negative polarity are hiding. It's not the obvious people that are leaders of countries or politicians. They're behind the scenes. And to avoid judging people and to remember that those people are you. The worst person that you see out there is you. And don't get caught up in judging people for if they're negative or positive. Go within and try to identify where this aspect of these people that you see in the external world is within you and provide light and love to the situation. And by doing that, by touching people with the light and love from your heart, you can make a difference. They imply that here, that we can make a difference to even the most elite, we can change the world with our love and light. Couched within the answer to this is that your love and light can change the world and it can influence the elite. You have that ability now. We have that ability together. There's also a great discussion of working in groups has a magnifying effect. And I believe even though we're non-local, the Reality Revolution group that comes together every day is a powerhouse social memory complex that is getting better and better. And when we come together and meditate together, we are changing the world every day. And I am honored to be a part of that. And I want us to continue to work together as a group to change the world because that's what we're here for. We are a collection of light workers and star seeds. There's a reason that you come to my channel because deep down you have an inner knowing that you are an ascended master from a higher density, that you've come here. In most of the cases, I'm meeting people that are so powerful and unique from different experiences. And if we come together and use this power that we already have, we don't have to go out and learn anything or go through an advanced course. It is already within us. Then we can change the world. And I want you to never forget that you are the creator, connected to the creator, as they always imply. And we are sharing this journey together to know the creator every day and to unify with that one love that is obviously there. And every day we learn to get closer to this beautiful energy of the creator. For the creator is in all things, in all people, in all moments. So thank you. I will keep an eye out for new channelings and new information from this material. And I promise you, I'll share it as soon as I find it. We are continuing learning and adapting and growing and evolving with this information and the learnings that we are having. And more and more, each of us is getting in touch with our higher selves and understanding this material with a greater amount of clarity. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at The Reality Revolution. Dot com. You can check out all my art at www.newearth.art. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. <laughs>